I guess everybody adapted, um, but I know it's been tough. Not gigging, because let's face it, royalties have dried up, you know. Oh, just as a, well. Generally speaking, I mean, royalties are not what they used to be, like in the 90s or, or the 80s, you know. So, so it, when you say that, so that's as good as any spot to, tr to just ask about, like, all of the things that you've been involved in on, um, I'd say, for about the last 40 years, would you say? Uh, recording um, professionally and producing? And yeah, you, may, hang on. It might be a little bit longer than that. Might yeah. be a little bit longer. Yeah. So, so are you saying that royalties that you have from other projects that you did from that long ago, that percentage is drying up? Or are you saying stuff that you're doing now is negotiated at less, there's a less value, less value to it now? Um, well, it's, it's probably a bit of both, but certainly the stuff that we, I mean, I was involved with quite a lot of, you know, fairly successful records. Um, in the 80s and the 90s to some extent as well and um you know that used to you used to get quite nice residuals on that you know it wasn't like you're going to retire on it but it was like oh that's nice right Just, right you know, pay some taxes and some bills and stuff and you know i think everybody's noticed that just since it's really since everything turned to streaming and spotify and uh you know the rates are just uh they to me they seem to be way down certainly for for musicians like us you know so Maybe, you're saying streaming for the artist is not a good thing i don't i well it's a, it's that's a great question because I, <laughs> I think it's really mixed because what's great about it is that you know if if we make a record we can re release it very easily and um we can get it to the people that want to hear the record but making money out of it that's a whole separate question um you know, because we're not selling little pieces of plastic anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, except maybe a few at gigs. But I mean, CD sales are way down. Vinyl's actually up, but it's still, it's still a low. It's the, the music industry is not, not what it was. And that's okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not somebody that just goes, oh, it's all better in the old days, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, there's always an upside and a downside, but I do think that in terms of people being able to make a lot, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Or even just a really decent living. I mean, I was more in that a decent living category. Um, From royalties, being part of that. Well, session fees. Yeah. Yeah, you know, stuff that comes in afterwards. Um, it's just not there anymore. You know, we used to get, you'd make a record, it'd be a hit. You know, so you got paid for the session. Then you'd get, it'd be on like a, some TV shows, you know. And it's like, oh, it's on the TV show here. There's another couple Different of hundred, royalties. you know. Yeah. And then um, stuff from the radio, and um, it's all way down. Yeah, you know. I think for me, I had a, dis a, a decisive moment a couple of years ago where someone came up to me on a gig and said, "Hey, do you have any? You have a CD?" And that was common for the last fifteen or so years. And I said, "Yeah," and I gave him a CD, and he thanks and turned around and walked away. Like yeah. didn't ask me how much it was. Like just yeah. was like, "Oh, this is this is." this is free which is yeah. i wasn't making any money on i mean most of these endeavors it takes a bit of time for you to recoup right any money you put into production but even on a small recording you, there's still probably ten thousand dollars at play like to come up with a, a trio record of originals and pay musicians and studio yeah. engineers and all that kind of stuff and it wasn't like i just i was more stunned but also like uh-huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> right like, like, yeah. like it wasn't a, i wasn't like i wasn't personally upset at at yeah. him or anything but it just was like it was a clear mark of yeah. the way these things are thought of now yeah. you know yeah yeah it's almost like it's it's a promotional device right that's right it's an expensive an business card i actually it, well, we both play with jesse gross right? sure you know and jesse plays with todd rungren as you as, sure as you know and i i went to see jesse play with todd at daryl's house and um I love Todd, you know, he's, he's been, he was a hero of mine from way, way back. So Jesse said, oh, come and meet Todd, you know. So uh, Todd was on the bus, you know, he was eating his, his dinner and stuff. I got on the bus, I had a little chat with Todd and I said, oh, you know, I'd love to give you my CD. And, it, and, it, and he looked at it, he went, oh, that, oh, that's really nice. He said, but I don't have a CD player. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, even Todd even Rundgren Todd doesn't Rundgren have doesn't a have CD player. Yeah. The yeah. world is, you know, what happened, you know? Right. Yeah, it's a yeah. very... He very... took it anyway, you know, but I thought, yeah. we, 
yeah, it's probably just going to go in the box with the others, you know. Yeah, I mean, at least you know, and with him, maybe it's a really nice coaster to put to to put his drink <laughs> right, on. Right. In yeah. the old days, you could uh, you could deseed your weed on an album, but you can't on a CD. <laughs> so I think you just have to put your drink on it. Yeah, that. that's a good idea. Yeah, 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 you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. sure many of many a Merlot has been on a Fat Mink CD uh, over the years. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, people give me download cards now, and it's like I yeah. it's on Apple Music, but okay. Like I, yeah, I saw yeah. Dave Attell recently live, um, and uh, I got like two download cards. I was in the front row, and he gave out download cards for his opener for free. And it's like, oh, this is a nice memory, but I'm not going to use the download code. It's on Apple Music. Right. So. So, right, right, right. But uh, yeah. I mean, that aside from like the physical uh, consideration of, of what's going on with the music now, uh, you know, obviously a big part of getting like uh, the royalties to pay what they should and for yeah. musicians to get the money they need, it's going to take some sort of action, you know, by lawmakers, uh, yes. which I, I don't think they're necessarily equipped to make those decisions that well here. Do, is it are they more ahead of the curve as far as lawmaking and the entertainment side of things? Uh, in Europe, in, yeah. Um, there's actually, a, I'm, I'm hearing that there's a move afoot in the UK, um, and, and to some degree in, Euro in the rest of Europe as well. Um, it, it can be tricky to get to get lawmakers to really understand the difference between, you know, Paul McCartney or something, you know, who's always, you know, even a half a percent of of his stuff. <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and people like us, you know, who 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 were doing okay, and then suddenly it's like not doing so okay. But I, I think they are starting to get it. And they you know, I saw a thing the other day. It was like they're looking at um, streaming rates. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> where you know things like Spotify, where you go, hang on a minute. You know, the guy that runs or owns Spotify, the CEO, is like a billionaire. You know, most of the people making the music are just kind of getting their little, I don't know, you know, oh. $5.73, you know. I, um, yeah, I did get one check, but my threshold is, is $20. So if you're less than 20 yeah. in the can, you know, stored, you don't get it, but you can check it. But that's, that was after um, 50, 12 years. Of, yeah, you right. Know, uh, and, and I'm, Paul McCartney, I'm sure, is getting He's doing checks okay. pretty regularly. He's doing it, right? mm -hmm. Which yeah. is probably the reason why some big artists have sold their whole catalogue as well. Like Dylan did that, didn't he? Yeah, that was recent, right? It was quite recent, yeah. yeah. For like, you know, 30 million bucks or something. Because it's like, well, you know, how old is he? He's 80 years old. He's probably thinking, yeah, that'll last me out, you know. That'll, that'll do it, yeah. And the people that buy the catalogue, the private equity companies, they're just taking the long view. and they're going, It's probably the CEO you know. of Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the guy that bought it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, I know Barry Gordy sold his catalogue years ago, and I, right. I remember because he had a piece, I think, of everything that was written by the writing team there. Um, yeah. Holland Holland and uh, yeah. Dozier, I think is that. Yeah. And uh, so every tune that that team wrote because they were hired by him and he, and he mm. also was a good songwriter, but long story short, is I think he sold his entire catalog for uh, 40 million. Wow. And then he sold, or no, it was all in. He sold the record company, uh, the buildings. Yeah. Uh, and the, I think he sold this recording catalog for 80 million and sold the the uh the buildings for 40 so he'll be okay i think he'll just yeah he'll be okay yeah i could be wrong so i mean maybe i shouldn't <laughs> even I, I did read the i read his book uh, uh anyway it, yeah it just nothing libelous there yeah it's yeah. um it's uh it's a different world but it's so, a different world yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, and the heavy rotation thing i mean i guess that still is happening but i don't know i mean i'm certainly not an authority on it all i know is the checks got smaller Right. Yeah, that's that's all I know, really. But also a lot of people said to me, you know, there's money out there. There's all these old school collection societies. We should, you know, we don't want to spend the whole podcast talking about money, I guess. But <laughs> there are all these kind of, you know, these Tim Pan Alley type collection societies that have been there since forever, you know, since piano music. Um, and the, some of them are, they, they've been collecting stuff for years, you mm -hmm. know, and they're not, let's say they're not, Maybe some of them aren't that proactive mm -hmm. in seeking people out. And I think that's become almost like a new, um, it's a, a little sort of niche for people. 
is to, um, you know, I've certainly been, appro- been approached about that. And I may go with someone who says, look, I'll, I'll proactively look for this money, you know. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a good chance it's just sitting somewhere. It's and just they, sitting in yeah. some bank account, in, you know, somewhere. And you're entitled to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got a little bit out of Italy recently for the Penguin Cafe Orchestra. And, um, and it was just because some society was closing down, you know. Oh. And, they, and some, thank, thank you. It wasn't a huge amount, but it was, you know, it was a couple of thousand dollars or something, you know, which mm. is great, you know. And, um, yeah, some guy had a sort of, you know, a conscience attack or something, I don't know, and just went, well, you know, this money. I could just take the money or I could try and find some of these artists, you know, and he did that. Amazing. Yeah, so that was good. So, but you think, well, there's probably a lot more like that, so... Yeah. Yeah.